Per usual, everything on this channel is for educational purposes only and is not intended as financial advice. So once again, I'll have a full sheet of all of my analysis on a separate page. I'll link that up in the description of the video. Uh, I did make a great trade last week, and uh, I'll put I'll put any trades I make uh, in these uh, cells as well. That way you can see if, you know what I'm saying versus what actually happens. I'll also highlight what cells uh, I think are best to trade or uh, stuff that I'm watching or stuff that that I traded. Okay, so if if you go to the uh, Excel spreadsheet 1211, that was last week. Here's this week 1218. Uh, and again, for the video, I'll have this all on a separate screen, so it's just so I'm not going back and forth every time. So another week, another FOMONC decision. So that's pretty much what's overarching in this entire video. Any USD pair uh, is getting slaughtered by the dollar. So <laughs> just keep that in mind as your overarching principle. You know, if you're going to try to short the dollar or long anything against the dollar, you better double check that logic, <laughs> including myself, who, for, especially for UJ, wants to keep shorting it because it just looks like insanely overbought, but we'll get to that. So here's US dollar, uh, odd USD. On the weekly, we have a questionable Kumo breakout, which is really good for a bearish entry signal. Uh, it's below the Kijun, it's close to the Kijun, that's what you want to see. You want to see breakouts close to the Kijun as possible. That way it tells you uh, it, it's, it was in equilibrium at the time of the breakout, and it will likely continue past equilibrium should a breakout occur. So this is what you want to see. So I put a giant uh, resistance line there just to remind me on lower time frames what's going on. And then these are uh, these are from lower time frames. But uh, I think more importantly on the daily, there's a really nice setup for a A B C D uh, A B C D. Basically, it's a wave pattern where you have two uh, sets of movements that are the same length. So that's what I'm expecting here. It looks really set up for that. Uh, you can see the bear flag broke down. You can see the cloud. Everything says it's bearish. Bearish cloud, bearish TK, bearish lagging span. So it looks like it's set up great for more down on the daily. This uh, setup is definitely the setup of the week as far as the pattern is concerned. Uh, the pattern matches the cloud. That's what I like to see. Uh, it's got room on the RSI. It'd be great if it could make it past this previous RSI as well. We'll see what happens on the higher time frames as far as support it's kind of in the middle of everything so we'll see where it goes i expect it to go lower especially based on the weekly kumo breakout that's usually a really great signal uh, so the four hour again everything's bearish questionable bull div you can see we have a lower low here uh, questionable bottomy type attempt we'll see on open um, hourly I'm thinking maybe three drives have occurred and it's going to try to pull back up to the Kijun. We'll see, or this level, because again, this is the weekly Kijun support resistance line. So it's a big zone. And if we go to the five minute, uh, just range bound, nothing really going on. It may attempt to stab back up through the cloud at this 731 level. Under Euro, Euro is interesting because last week I was hoping for the, uh, the bottom play here, but this was a triple bottom, quad bottom, whatever bottom. Uh, but you can see it definitely broke that. Whether or not this was just a, a cheeky bottom, a cheeky stab down, I don't know. But uh, based on support resistance from 03, it's kind of a no man's land. I tweeted about that. So the uh, support resistance that I have is this is level here, considering it's the last basically local highs of this zone in like 02. So um, I really like going down there, diving down. Just based on this weekly, uh, just the fact that it broke the horizontal here from 03 um, pretty cleanly. So we'll see what happens. But if we zoom in a little on the weekly, pitchfork is from a lower time frame. But if you can see it's just a bare channel straight down. Going to the daily, this is where I drew the pitchfork in, these levels here. And all I'm showing, the pitchfork shows this really well, I think. The sort of bouncy zones, the PRZs, potential reversal zones. Um, so I'm looking at after resistance is established here. Uh, a stab somewhere down here, which is right again in, into the horizontal uh, horizontal support. And uh, there's a, also definitely a bull div action going on. Whether or not that'll continue, I don't know. So it might just go sideways into this resistance and then try for that stab of the horizontal and diagonal resistance of the pitchfork. Four hour, everything's bearish on the cloud. Um, even on you know daily, everything's very bearish as far as cloud's concerned. Cloud's bearish, TK's bearish. 
lagging spans bearish. So back to four hour, not much to say other than, you know, asks hit this level are probably acceptable. Uh, I know this gets busier the lower I go just based off on all the drawing I have on the higher time frames. Again on the hourly, flat Kumo bounce to here is viable, but uh, it looks pretty strong. Uh, there's some pretty strong evidence that this diag on the pitchfork will hold. We'll see what happens on open. And then five minute, just range bound nonsense really. On to cable, we have a sort of a bear flag, um, rising wedge, I don't really know what to call this. Something going on uh, that's trying to break down, it appears. Um, this was very much clearly a bear channel, bear flag, bear pennant, whatever you want to call it, that broke down. The rest of this, however, kind of questionable as far as continuation. It's definitely oversold based on the TK disequilibrium, but Again, trend is clearly bearish based on cloud uh, and the TK cross. Everything's just bear, bear city, bear town. Um, and then these are just my support resistance lines that I've marked on, on lower time frames. So if we go to the daily, you can see I'm marking these flat Kumos here. Those are resistance lines. This sort of channel remains as a support resistance. And uh, previous highs here, as well as the flat Kumo, remains uh, resistance. So it's possible that we get a uh, recross down here. Uh, currently the TK is, is bullish. So if you get a recross bearish, uh, that would be a great entry signal. Bearish TK cross below the cloud is part of the like strong signals. So if you get a bullish TK cross above the cloud, that's a strong signal, and a bearish TK cross below the cloud, that's a strong signal for continuation. So when I see these cross recross action on uh, lower time frames, I like to watch that because it's a great short term short short term high leverage entry uh, for any market really. Uh, on four hour, everything's bearish, TK, cloud, lagging span. There's a questionable uh, Adam left here. So Adam, Eve, double bottom. The Adam is a V like this, and the Eve is a U like this, and then uh, the breakout would be above the neckline. So the fact that there's a nice tweezer, tweezer top sort of action going on here it says to me that there's sort of a nice neckline being established. You can also see that uh, this previous horizontal over here was definitely resistance. So it would make sense that it would be resistance again here. Move down to the hourly. Again, everything's bearish. Lagging spans into price. That's one of those early signals that the bearish momentum is waning. Uh, you have a flat Kumo here, so that's a, a level, horizontal level that you can expect with some certainty that uh, it'll want to reach for that zone. So also some questionable, like, inverted head and shoulders stuff going on here. So the 5 minute has a really nice setup. Uh, I was talking about on higher time frame, the cross-recross. So you have a, everything's bullish. Um, so this would definitely be a counter trend trade for higher time frames, uh, which is why you should be in and out quickly. Um, everything's bullish except the TK cross. Uh, so the TK cross cross bearish here. So if it recrosses bullish, that would be a, a long entry signal to the local high. And then uh, past the local high, you can look for the flat Kumo on the higher time frame as far as a uh, level, you know, because this, this would also be an edge to edge cloud sort of trade. So should it make a TK cross, the first target would be local high. The second target would be uh, this one two five five level so this is a trade i'm definitely watching on open and throughout uh today and tomorrow so new zealand usd uh largely range bound mess on um, just pretty much every time frame but a few things to point out one being this flat kijun which is also a magnet for price uh, you can see the power of that even you know when price was all the way up here it came all the way back down sure that was a phone long decision whatever but the point is the support resistance was already marked on the chart before the decision happened. So again, that's why those levels are important. Um, so that's why I'm going to mark that on the chart as giant support. Cloud is bullish, leaning bearish eventually. So again, if you get a Kuma breakout down, that's your first short entry signal. Then the second short entry signal would be a TK cross below the cloud. And then you just continue it down from there. So if we go to the daily, uh, not much possible ABCD just like odd but I don't like the fact that I'd be predicting a break of this key June support certainly it can happen but just based on the weekly I don't think it will so again largely range bound mess in all time frames daily's definitely bearish hourly the clouds blown out everything's bearish here it looks super oversold so that might be a you know a long if you if you want a long it's not bad because it's a long at key June weekly support sort of attempt at a rejection wick here I'm definitely not going to be trading it, but maybe a, a low leverage hold for the week. I don't know. We'll see. 
I might even consider that uh, past open hourly, really not much going on other than selling. <laughs> and uh, you get these crazy inverse candles back to back, like who wants to trade that nonsense? But uh, I know a lot of people do trade Kiwi. So there's a bit of a TK disequilibrium, again, more evidence for up. No bull dip though. It might just range here and then move to here. Who knows? But definitely doesn't look like any strength as far as the bulls are concerned. Uh, the five minute though, I do like this again. You're looking for, in this case, you'd want Kijun to be closer to price. So as this sort of drifts sideways, probably, or even sideways up a little bit into the cloud, your entry would be, uh, you know, the Kijun meeting the cloud and then price meeting the Kijun in the cloud, confirming resistance. So that's a great entry signal. That's sort of not explicitly like cloud 101 type stuff, but definitely how you want to enter a trade. It's a bit of a waning uh, bear, bear momentum, so maybe this pushes a little higher and then down, but I'm generally just going to stay out of Kiwi for the week, I think. Now USD CAD on the weekly. So again, the overarching cloud themes that I keep talking about, cross recross, and you'll see this this fractal iteration on any market, any time frame. So you can see you had the Kumo breakout, the TK cross telling you to go long. The TK cross sort of dips into the cloud. This is sort of confirming cloud support. And then we, we're going to get, we'll see if, we ha if it happens, but most likely a TK recross bullish with another uh, sort of move up. And depending on what oil does, who knows, but just based on technicals on this time frame and the cloud, it's definitely telling me that it's pushing for more up. Cloud is bullish. So everything is bullish except price isn't cleanly out of the cloud and there's definitely a bearish TK cross. So your, your entry signal on the weekly would be a bullish TK cross with price above cloud. Not something you can probably look for this week, but uh, in the coming weeks, definitely. And then all I've done is just mark the key as resistance here. And then there's some other horizontals on lower time frames. If we go to daily, largely range bound, nothing much to say. Questionable tweezer top here. It's probably the best example of a tweezer top that we've seen on any time frame. Maybe not great based on uh, generally you want to see tweezer tops like at the bottom of the range like this. So this is sort of just range bound mess in general. Um, there is a flat Kumo here that I didn't mention, but so that's another level. Like it just might just, just go sideways indefinitely in that zone. Uh, four hours is a little more interesting. We have a questionable Kijun breakout. New neutral TK when they touch like this. You don't see that too often, but it definitely says bearish momentum is over. And you can see that obviously with the candles. You're, we're getting sort of a reset of the, the bullish momentum and then uh, cloud's still bearish. So overall, no, the, the entry signals aren't clean altogether. But if you get a bullish TK with a bullish cross with the price above cloud, that's what you want to see. Uh, so your zone would be this... 135 level based on uh, weekly Kijun. So you can expect this. I expect this to keep going throughout the week. Of course, pending oil. Hourly USD CAD, flat Kumo, and this was a zone on the four hour, was it? From the five minute. So hourly might just be range bound. You might want to wait for the TK cross recross again, like I keep saying. It doesn't really look like a long as it stands, but you know, it may dip down and then again look for the cross recross on that time frame even though the four hour looks pretty good, you know, it, it has, it could go a long way. You know, you could get 18 more candles before cloud flips bullish. And then finally on the five minute, it's just range bound really uh, flat Kumo at the one, three, three, five level. So for USD CAD, definitely watch the four hour this week. Now onto the craziness that is UJ, apparently Kuroda speaking today. So that should be interesting. Uh, but you can see we have a Kumo breakout on the Kumo twist, which is great. It's what you want to see. It says the cloud is thinking what is happening before it happens. Uh, we have a flat Kumo here. So this is always going to be a support resistance level. Something to look for when it drops eventually. Overall, though, the signals are mixed on weekly because you have a bearish cloud, bearish TK cross. You have this crazy Kumo breakout. Not really anything actionable in the weekly. On the daily, again, it looks super oversold. Uh, we've got bear divs all over the place with this giant TK disequilibrium. So I'd expect it to eventually reach for this 112 level based on the weekly flat Kumo, but uh, even this 110 based on the Kijun, all this is saying is, you know, it's the 50% fib of this move here. That's all that's saying. Four hour, definitely bullish, but uh, again, rounded top. So who knows if the TA even matters at this point, but it's definitely looking weaker just based on the rounded top there. 
and the higher time frames especially. On the hourly cloud, again, above cloud, flat Kumo, look for the cross recross. Doesn't look like a buy here. Not much else to say. Uh, for higher, eh, maybe 119, 120.5, somewhere in there. To think this is going to keep going, you know, after five, six weeks of just crazy buying, maybe, we'll see. Last uh, time frame would be the five minute and largely range bound. So the pattern to watch for the week, again, AudioSD, that ABCD on the daily. Watch, I'm going to be watching uh, GBP USD on five minute on open. And I'm going to be watching uh, USD CAD throughout the week on the four hour and the hourly and it's also worth watching UJ on the hourly. Again, I'm looking for cross recross. Cloud is a trend indicator. So when you get a cross recross like that, that's a continuation sign. I've said that over and over. So that's what you want to do. The trend is your friend. The trend makes you money. So per usual, guys, like, dislike, share, subscribe, donate. There's a Bitcoin address in the description if you find this useful. Uh, hit me up on Twitter, Telegram, and happy trading.